Recently, we've been following the works on Canadian Pacific's boiler as the team has been going through reaming, tapping, stays, and everything else to go with it. Now, one important job is called corking. Essentially, it's where you manipulate the metal to make a steam and watertight seal. And Jamie has lost complete control of all his senses and offered to teach me how to do it. So, without further ado, let's cue the music and get cracking. <laughs> Now, to give you an idea of where we are in the timeline of the Canadian Pacific at the moment, the guys in the boiler shop have finished reaming and tapping now 2,300 stays, and inside the firebox, they're currently knocking over the stays to make a steam and watertight seal. On the outside, they're doing a process called corking, and essentially, it's where you manipulate the metal to make a steam and watertight seal on the outside, because otherwise, well, it would just leak. Historically, they'd use a hammer and chisel, but nowadays, technology has come along further, and they use one of these. This is a corking gun powered by air. Essentially, there is a bullet inside which shuttles backwards and forwards and hits the corking tool, and that gives you your hammer blow impact on the actual metal. However, there's a fine art to it, so without further ado, let's crack on and see how I get on. Jamie is one of our talented boiler smiths here at Ropley, and along with the rest of the team, has been working on Canadian Pacific's boiler to get it back into steam. After a quick demonstration while we were setting up the cameras, Jamie made the corking process look pretty effortless, and I was feeling optimistic for my go. But fear not, that would not last long. So Jamie, um, what are we doing? So we're going to be tooling these uh, steel and model stays. Um, specifically with this type, you've got a narrow edge corking tool um, and all that does is mash the material between the stay and the plate to create a steam and watertight seal and that's all that is really um, here's one I made earlier true blue, blue, Very nice. they true blue, blue Peter. Peter fashion <laughs> and yeah basically the tool runs around like so to create a, almost a groove in, in some ways that but a nice flattened mashed seal, like this. Like that. Oh, just like that, yeah. Just yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. just like that. Yeah, this yeah, one yeah. I made earlier. Make it look so easy. I've got a feeling it's really not going to be. No. No, probably not. So just remember, feather on the trigger. Don't go too mad of it. Don't let the all bounce, right. that's the worst thing you can do. And your angles, your angles are important. So as you're watching me then, imagine if we're on it, okay, you're basically gonna be doing that. Right it. All the way around it, like that. Go on it. Let's give it a whirl. While the process didn't look too bad when watching from the wings, once I pushed the trigger and the tool sprang into life, it was a very different story. As Jamie mentioned, I would have to work around the stay in a circle, trying to keep a sharp angle relative to the plate work. Too shallow and I'd just make a pretty circle on the plate, which wasn't remotely useful. Too steep and I'd just hammer the stay itself. Trying to keep a good angle whilst applying enough force to actually make a difference and wrestling with a tool that was trying to bounce itself all over the place required a surprising amount of strength. Needless to say, my first attempt would not be that good. Luckily, with Jamie by my side, I was sure he would be sympathetic. <laughs> what's this? What's this? Uh, maybe not, Ben. <laughs> it's my first time, Jamie. <laughs> I can still be critical. <laughs> I'm certain you <I'm> should <laughs> be. Uh, okay, I'll try and tidy it up. Go on. Get there eventually. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's harder though, isn't it? God, it's harder than it looks. Genuinely, I don't know how you manage to do like a hundred a day of these. Ah. Yeah, that'll do for now. How we go with that one? On down, what, a hundred to go? Very much. 
And so, with one stay nailed after what felt like a decade, the mini marathon began. In the next few hours, I would have to tool all of the stays in the handy box that Jamie had drawn out for me. As a bonus, he even told me the reason why. Any good? Yeah. We'll find out when we put fill it full of water and it leaks. So I've got to wait until the hydraulic test. Yeah, this is why I've this is why I've marked your box with W, so I know to blame. Oh, so, so when it messes up, it's like, Will did this. Yeah, pretty much. And that was the end of my railway career. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, go for that one. With those motivational words from Jamie out the way, I carried on doing my best to hold on for dear life while continuing to hammer away. After correcting my technique more times than I care to admit, Jamie did let in on a surprising fact about stays, which I had never considered. A common misconception with stays in general, it's not the head that's doing the work, it's the thread that's doing the work. The thread is there as the mechanical strength. The head is sacrificial, what a lot of people don't get right. And they always think when they see the heads non-existent, they think, oh, things going to blow. No, no, not at all. It's the thread inside the plate work that's the strength of keeping the thing together. So you can have this like without two threads, which is what that is roughly, sticking out. That's perfectly fine. And that'll sit in there for 30 years and probably do three 10-year tickets. Not a problem until you need to change a stay or replace the plate work. Well, uh, I certainly hope so. <laughs> Fingers crossed, yeah. <laughs> And so we carried on. I'd do a few, take a break and let my arms recover, and Jamie, being the machine he is, will pick up the tool and crack on with some of the other 2,000 other stays which needed tooling. Eventually, after a couple of hours and a few more reassuring words from the wings... To be fair, considering it's your first attempt at proper corking, you've not done bad, actually. I mean, it's not absolutely horrific. No, not yet. Verge gone passable? Yeah. We'll find out when we hydraulic it. Oh, don't say that! <laughs> <laughs> I started to feel like I was almost getting the hang of this. But by then we had mercifully reached the end of my section. Yeah, that'll do. That's it? That'll do. You've done your patch work. My God! That was insane! Just going to put this down. Genuine, what? So what, you got two and a half thousand stays of that to do? Yeah, so 4,600 <sighs> stay ends to either cork or knock over. Fair play to you guys. I mean, I knew oil smithing was a, a, an art form in itself, but I never realised just how much detail <laughs> went into this. So. Oh, yeah. But yeah. if you don't mind, I think I'm going to stick to the filming and firing <laughs> side of things. <laughs> Jamie, thank you so much for joining me, inviting me us along to have a, a go at this. I'm oh, knackered. <laughs> That's it for us this week, guys. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and we will see you next time. All right, TCFN. Oh, my God. <laughs> would, would, would you sleep at night? Not I hate that. it won't leak. <laughs> you sense of terror I did not experience, expect to experience today, Jamie. Sorry about that. Does it look like mine? I think I'm quite a few years off it looking like yours, Jamie. <laughs> I'd just like to say for the record, my fear is that I have to come back in a few months' time and said, sadly, Canadian Civic failed his boiler exam due to a few stays in this very specific area. Because of him. <laughs> oh, <that's> a, <laughs> probably shouldn't have put this episode out now, just in case that comes true. Question is, do I make it look easier than what it actually is? Yes, yes you do, Jamie. <laughs>